So let's then do the third part to this problem, where we're actually going to then calculate, based on throwing in three bars of hydrogen and one bar of nitrogen, what are then the equilibrium concentrations that come out of this. And so if I'm going to substitute in numbers here, I'm going to write 5.84 times 10 to the 5, because that's what my value of k is. Over here on my left-hand side, I have my activities, and so I'm going to substitute in directly for the pressures. Since that's what I have here is I have gases in my chamber. So I have the partial pressure of ammonia squared divided by the partial pressure of nitrogen um, times the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. And in this case, all three of these partial pressures are divided by the standard pressure, which is just one bar. Now the one thing that you have to do here in this case is that we have to use an ice table to basically determine what is the equilibrium concentrations because that's what these pressures represent is the pressure of these gases at equilibrium. And so we know what they are initially and so then to find the change then that's where the ice table comes in. So I have my H2, my N2, and my ammonia and I have initial change and then at equilibrium. And so initially I have three bars of hydrogen I have one bar of nitrogen and I have zero bars of the product, which is ammonia. The change that happens is going to be three times H, since that's the stoichiometric coefficient in front of hydrogen. The nitrogen, I just subtract X. And then finally, with the nitrogen, I am going to be adding two times X, because again, the stoichiometric coefficient instead of in front of the nitrogen, or sorry, in front of the ammonia is two. So that means then at equilibrium, I start with three and I'm going to subtract three X for the hydrogen, I start at 1 and I subtract x for the nitrogen, and then here I start at 0 and I'm going to add 2x for the ammonia. So I can now take these expressions and I can put them back into my relationship between k and the activities over on this side. So if I'm going to write in my k again, I have 5.84 times 10 to the 5. I have in this expression um, for my partial pressure of ammonia, for that I'm going to write in 2x squared. On the bottom I'm going to have uh, 1 minus x and then I'm going to have multiplied by 3 minus 3x raised to the power of 3. What I can do is I can start to simplify this expression. So I'm going to have 5.84 times 10 to the 5 and that's equal to, well on top if I evaluate the square I'd have 4x squared. On the bottom I have 1, 1 minus x, and then here I've got 3 minus 3x, so I can distribute out a 3, and then that 3 also goes to the power of 3. So I'm going to have a 27, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and then I have 1 minus x times 1 minus x cubed, which gives me 1 minus x raised to the power of 4. Here I can simplify one more time, so I'm going to have 5.84 times 10 to the 5 on my left hand side. I'm going to have a 4 over 27, because I just take that numerator, numerator and denominator out. And then I am left with an x squared over a 1 minus x raised to the power of 4. And the equivalent statement to that is to say, well, that's just x over 1 minus x squared, all squared. Because if that thing gets basically multiplied by itself, then I get x squared is e over 1 minus x raised to the power of 4. Now I'm doing all this work because now I can start moving some of these terms to the left-hand side and simplifying again what's going on on the right-hand side. So if I do multiply by 27, divide by 4, and take the square root, so if I multiply by 27 and divide by 4 times 5.84 times 10 to the 5, then what I get is 3.94 times 10 to the 6, and then I can take the square root of that, and what that leaves me on the right-hand side is x over 1 minus x squared. That number, the square root of 3.94 times 10 to the 6, well, that's just going to be equal to 1986. And that I'm going to multiply, and now I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared, or 1 minus x all squared, but I'm also going to expand it by using first outside, inside, last. And so that gives me 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And on the right-hand side, I'm still left with x. If I distribute in the 1986 into this polynomial, I'm going to get 1986 minus 3972x plus 1986 squared, or x squared. And if I move this x to the other side, I subtract both sides by x, then I get a minus x here, and that's going to be equal to 0. And then finally, 
if I subtract the two terms that just have an x associated with it and rearrange, I'll have 1986 times x squared. I'm going to have minus 3973x because I have 3972 minus minus x. And to that I'm going to add the 1986 and that's equal to zero. And so what we have here is a polynomial that we can solve using the quadratic formula. And some of you might be thinking, well, why couldn't before we just cross off the x in the denominator and simplify? And the reason is because this k value is super big. This is a very big k value. And whenever you did that, the k values were very small. And so then the changes would be very small. But in this case, because k is very big, then that means that this x that we have here is also going to be very big. So we can't cross it off. And so what that means is that we have to go through this um, solution process where we actually have to solve for x using all the terms. And what that leads us to, a, as I've said before, is that this polynomial, which we will now solve using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is written as x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, all square root, divided by 2 times a. Where again, the way that these polynomials are written is a x squared plus b times x plus c is equal to 0. So in this case, my a is this 1986, my b is the negative 3973, and my c is 1986. And so if I substitute those numbers in, I get x is equal to 3973 plus or minus minus 3973 squared minus 4 times 1986 times 1986. I take the square root of everything after the plus minus, and then I'm going to divide that by 2 times 1986. If I start to simplify these expressions, then what I'm going to end up with is 3973 plus or minus the square root of 7945, and that's divided by 3972. And so if I evaluate this using the plus and the minus, so in one way I'm going to evaluate it with the plus, and that's going to give me 1.023, or if I do it with the minus, then I'm going to get 0 0.978. And so we end up with two solutions, and that should be expected. We should get usually two roots out of the quadratic equation. And so how do we know which one to choose? And so this is where we go back to our ice table and we pull out, well, what were supposed to be the concentrations at equilibrium? And we said, well, the pressure of hydrogen, that was going to be 3 minus 3x. And the pressure of nitrogen, well, that's supposed to be 1 minus x. And the pressure of the ammonia, that was supposed to be 2 times x. And what we just found is these two values of x. So if we were to take the 1.023, and we were going to plug that into x, what we would get as a value is 3 times 1.023, and that number is going to be then bigger than 3, so we would end up with a negative number. And we would do the same thing here for the nitrogen, 1.023, well that x into here, well that's going to be then bigger than 1, and that also gives us a negative number. And negative pressures make zero sense. And so because of that, we can then logically deduce that we're not going to be using this 1.023 value. Conversely, if we use this 0.978 and we plug that into these x values, then I'm going to get positive numbers in the end. And in fact, if I do that for my pressure of hydrogen, I'm going to get 0.067 bar. Down here with my nitrogen, I'm going to get 0.022 bar. And then finally, for my pressure of my ammonia, I get 1.96 bar. Now again, let's just take a quick step back and let's just do one last quick calculation. And what I want to calculate is what is the mole fraction of ammonia at the equilibrium conditions. And so the mole fraction is just simply going to be the partial pressure of the ammonia divided by the total partial pressure or the total pressure in the vessel. And so the partial pressure of ammonia is 1.96, which we just calculated a second ago. And the total pressure is 1.96 plus 0 0.022 plus 0 0.067, which is 2.049. And what that gives us is 0.96. And this is actually fairly remarkable because what this value tells us, this 0.96, says that when we started at the beginning we had zero mole fraction of ammonia. We put in some hydrogen and some nitrogen into a vessel. And that over time, when it moves towards equilibrium, we ended up with the, um, an amount or a, in terms of mole fraction, 96% of it is going to be then ammonia. Now here's the rub with this, is that 
when we talk about spontaneity, and that's what we talk about when we say, when we look at Gibbs free energy and changes in Gibbs free energy, we don't talk about reaction rates. It doesn't, it doesn't tell us a single thing about how fast the reaction goes. And in fact, in this case, this reaction has a super high activation energy. And so there are certain things that we have to do then to overcome that, and then that'll shift the equilibrium. And that's something that then we're going to start to discuss next.